there's the threat of when we're younger, we don't get the support. We have the, and I see this a lot too, is this, the, this sort of withdrawal and pulling away from life. Oh, no one hears me. No one sees me. No. And as you said really nicely, no matter how hard I try, nothing happens. So what's the point in trying? And that internal sense of either I don't matter or there's no point trying to figure this out because no matter where I go, nothing gets figured out and no one listens to me. And those, and that's a common stigma for any mental health problem, but yeah, for sure. Yeah. And how, how do we encourage people in situations like that to then seek somebody else or, and I know this is a healthcare situation, right? Your um, wait list is now closed, right? And so it's, it's so hard for people to get the help once they get to the point of saying, wow, I actually really think I need it. Um, yeah. yeah. So there is for sure a, so there's the individual and the psychological aspect, which you were describing very well. I think there's also guilt in there. Like I yeah, should be yeah. doing it. I'm, you know, I'm not living up to whatever. Um, I should be using the resources that are available to me and I'm not. So it's my own fault, you know, different yeah, things yeah. like that. Uh, but then there are serious healthcare issues. So I think if an individual says, whether they're watching this or they saw it on TikTok or social media, or they read an article or a friend said, oh my gosh, I just got diagnosed. You and I are like peas in a pod. Maybe you should talk to your doctor, right? People often go through like a lot of barriers, right? First, they have to accept it. And there's a lot of self-stigma, right? There's a lot of, what if this is the case? Oh my gosh, my brain is broken and not working. What if I maybe I'm really probably just lazy. What they told me was right, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Then there's the stigma of their immediate family, right? Like spouse, if they're, you know, an adult or partner, uh, their siblings, parents, you know, whatnot. Sometimes cultural beliefs are a big barrier too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, really a lot of cultures apart, even in Western culture, there's stigma, but For a sure. lot of cultures that are not Western Europe and North America it's like an insult to your parents if you say, I think I have ADHD because it suggests they didn't raise you right. It's cultural beliefs that you're not willing to be a hard worker, et cetera, et cetera. So many layers. Yeah. Yeah. And then you go to your doctor and God bless him. So many doctors say, oh, you're fine. You're not hyper. You don't have ADHD. Don't worry about it. You know, just try harder, right? And oh, you've got depression. We'll treat your depression, right? Like even in my assessments for ADHD, to be thorough, to tick all the boxes, to establish symptoms going back into childhood and all the things we need to do. It is the most unfriendly thing for somebody with ADHD to go through an ADHD assessment, right? Checklists, bring your old report cards, do, do this, do that, timeliness, paperwork, whatever. Like I cringe that I make people do it, but I want to be thorough and give them a proper assessment. And it's hard, but when they do it, they get the right assessment, diagnosis and treatment plan that I like to think is kind of doctor proof, right? Like it's, I, I tick all the boxes, I'm thorough and et cetera. But the point is there are so many barriers. And if you talk to your doctor and they say, now nah, you don't have it. Well, then if they say, well, okay, but I don't know where to refer you, go find somebody. So now we're asking people with ADHD that's undiagnosed, untreated to do like 27,000 steps in the direction that it require organization and planning and everything else. So it is particularly difficult. I think we're getting better. Uh, you know, I do my best to be involved in educational programs and uh, help doctors learn more, different things like that. So, you know, we're hopefully getting there, but it's not easy. It's not an easy journey for people. Uh, what I would say to anybody who's watching this who hasn't been assessed or diagnosed yet and believes they have it is stick with it. It may take you longer than you think. I mean, I saw somebody this past week who said, you know, feeling, you know, they had a lot of social anxiety and they said, just even judging myself or worrying about what people would think held me back from getting the referral for a year or two. Right. And that, that happens to so many people. So, you know, persist with it. It may not be perfect. It may take you too long. You may not do it right. But if you get yourself assessed and diagnosed, you start, you have the opportunity to get treatment, right. And get things more on track. And hopefully we can open up the education to a lot more doctors and doctors will be more accepting. And there's different healthcare system issues, whether you're in Canada, like we are U S Europe, other countries, developing countries, you know, there's a lot, right? Like it's, but yeah, hopefully people can persist, right? At least if you learn about it and think it sounds like you, you can, while you're going through the process, 
listen to podcasts, audiobooks, you know. I always say, I tell people, I recommend a, a particular cognitive behavioral therapy book for adults with ADHD. And I say, you know, bibliotherapy, like doing therapy through a book is great, except when you have ADHD, you know, you may get the book, get excited, read four pages, put it down and find it under a pile nine months later and do absolutely nothing, right? So it's, it can be really helpful, but doesn't always get followed through. <laughs> 